Uh, it's actually quite timely, and I, I, I know that, uh, as our speaker before lunch said, uh, I'm the only thing between uh, you and cocktails, so we'll just take a few minutes here. But this is actually very timely. Uh, I wonder if you how many realize that actually 45 years ago, uh, nearly to the hour, was the first launch of a person to space. It was April 12th, which of course was Kazakhstan time at the Baikonur Cosmodrome that Yuri Gagarin flew to space for the first time. So it's been 45 years since the first space flight. And since then, uh, as Phil mentioned, uh, unfortunately only 450 or so people have been to space. There are more billionaires on the planet right now than there are people who've been in space ever. So it's a, it's a very exclusive club. It's something that has been very inaccessible. And yet, uh, I will talk <clears throat> a little bit about how tourism, space tourism, which is what Space Adventures does, the company that I'm the CEO of, uh, has harnessed existing technology from space. We spent a lot of time talking about information technology and, and uh, computers and things like that. But there are other types of technology, good old fashioned uh, hardware and rockets and things like that that will be used for many years to come, actually, to grow a new part of the travel industry. So I'll talk, about, I'll talk about space tourism, and I'll talk a little bit about how we've used that technology to open up space tourism. Uh, again, briefly, Space Adventures, uh, we were started eight years ago. We're most well known as having sent the, the brave individuals who spend $20 million to fly to the space station for 10 days to orbit. That's what we do. Uh, we also have had thousands of people experience uh, space and space adventures on Earth uh, and things like zero gravity airplanes and astronaut training centers and things like that. Uh, all of this uh, technology was, was built and developed by uh, the governments of the United States and the Soviet Union as part of the space race and now we've uh, worked with them to help develop it and use it commercially to help provide space experiences and uh, what is perhaps the ultimate experience in travel, which is space flight. I'd like to come back and ask uh, either Eric, or Leroy, or Peter, what role do you think the government ought to play in getting people into space and getting that cost down, if any? So, uh, Dan, I'll, a I'll answer that I think that as long as the government doesn't prevent it, <laughs> private, private industry will make it happen. And I can show you, it's particularly with regard to space tourism, you know, there are, how many, how many people in this room would like to go to space in their lifetime? 